Bryant, um, so excited to be talking to everybody this morning. I hope my voice isn't too loud. This is like my seventh time trying to record this video, but let's hope that this one is the win. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Hold up, give me a second to set a quick timer. I want to make sure that these videos are quick and concise. Don't want to spend too much time. We're going to set a 10 minute timer, hoping that we can wrap everything up that I want to talk about cleaning up vocals um, and logic in about 10 minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over here. Um, we're in logic, but I want to go to this slide real quick. Um, this on the front page is what we call a noise gate. But when we talk about cleaning up and I'll explain the noise gate here in general, there are a couple of tools that we use. A noise gate is one of them. It's a powerful tool for being able to tell the computer that anything past this point does not get through. If you actually listen to my vocal right now, it has a noise gate on it. Let's go take a look at it. So we're in logic and you can see on my vocal channel here, the first thing that you see is a noise gate. And we'll get into some of these parameters. I'll actually probably do a separate video on gating itself, um, but just wanted to show you just the power of a noise gate. Um, let me go ahead and disengage it real quick. And you see how much more background you hear my computer noise, you hear my fans going because I'm on an older computer and it's like what your screen recording and running logic at the same time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put that noise gate back on and we're going to dive in here into cleaning up vocals. So you can hear how much of a difference that makes um, and even being able to eliminate the fan noise um, that's on my vocal. And I have everything very, very tight. Um, so let's go back to this slide. All right, so whenever we are uh, editing basic audio, one of the tools that I always like to use, I like to use our basic tools. Um, there are fast ways to do things, do things, and there's long ways to do things, um, long ways to do things um, in, in the world of audio editing. And I like to use a combination of the two. Uh, sometimes the quick way isn't always the most efficient. Sometimes you have to get in there. So I'm gonna show you a couple of tips and tricks that I use to quickly, and it is a long old process, um, but it, once you know kind of some of the key commands, um, it can help increase your workflow and your work speed um, by leaps and bounds and still make sure you pay the proper attention to detail. So today we're gonna focus on two tools inside of Logic when dealing with a vocal. And give me one second here. So I have a song here by Lyric Reddick, one of our very own, um, Let's give it up for Lyric. <laughs> um, and actually, I'm one of the featured artists on this, but I don't think we'll actually hear a lot of me. We'll probably hear more of Lyric during this audio session. Um, so this is a song called Clouds. You can go look it up on Apple Music and Spotify and all of that good stuff. Um, all the streaming services, it is on there. Um, I made the beat and Lyric came in with the fire when, with the words, with the lyrics. And so let's go. You, you see what I did there? Lyric came in with the lyrics. <laughs> all right. So and um, let's go ahead and go to our toolbar. So how we get to our toolbar in Logic is very, very easy. There's a few ways, but I'm going to show you two. Um, the basic way right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. I had problems with that earlier, but hopefully you can see it at the top mid part of the screen. Um, right there, if you click on that, um, that cursor icon, that pointer, um, you see a toolbar. And that's very good for being able to access our different tools. Some of the tools I use a lot are the scissor tool, the fade tool, and the marquee tool. Um, automation curve and select tool, I'll use that as well, but that's way later down the road. Um, pencil tool, I honestly don't use that much. The eraser tool, I don't use that, that much. And surprisingly, glue and text tool, I could probably use a tutorial on those myself, to be honest with you. So one of the things that we are going to practice using today um, is, the, is the scissor tool, the marquee tool, and the fade tool. Um, so another way to get to our toolbar, we hit T and that same toolbar is right there at the front of the screen. And I actually want to show you a couple of tricks with the scissor tool. So scissor tool is very, very good about coming in deleting audio that you do not need. I am a processor focus mixing engineer. And so whenever I mix, um, I am always thinking about my processor. How much work is my computer going to have to do and at the the most or the the least that it has to do the better i'm going to be able to put that cpu attention on other processor heavy things that i'll need to do later in the track i don't want to spend processing power 
um, having to focus on fades or anything like that. So um, the scissor tool is, be is great for being able to come in, remove data that you don't want. It's very important to remember that all the audio inside of your computer is data. It is data. And so um, that is why it's digitized to be in this digital workspace environment. So it allows us to be able to come in and simply just go in. Remember, yes, it, it appears to our ears that we are coming in and editing audio. And yes, absolutely, that's what we're doing. But at the core of it, we are uh, we are data managing right now. Uh, all right. So uh, another tool that I like to use in addition to the scissor tool. Um, I like to use one of my favorites is the marquee tool. Now, there's two ways to get to the marquee tool. Of course, we can. Um, sorry, I just hit a bad key command and something else. All right. So there's two ways to get to the marquee tool. Um, you can hit T and go down there and hit R for and you'll get the marquee tool. Another tool that I like to use um, our shortcut that I like to use is just holding command and you see that very same marquee icon pop up. So let's take that marquee tool, we'll hold command, we'll click, and I'm gonna click right here in this space and let's listen to what is that. I'm gonna solo myself so you continue to hear me. Are uh, you really hear my fans going in the background? My noise gate is struggling to keep up right now because the computer fans are really starting to turn now. Um, all right, so let's listen to this silence. Oh, that's a nice little breath. So one of, the th one of the things when we're editing audio, especially when it comes to vocals, I always look for saliva and breath noise. Um, if it's too loud, it becomes distracting to the ear. And of course, nobody wants to hear this in the song, right? Lyric does a very good job of controlling his breath. Um, but every now and again, something does skip, slip through the cracks. So a good way of being able to edit that out is once we have it, um, select it, we can just hit delete. Et voila. And that space. I'm here to say, know that your life passed, you passed away. When you wake every day, go about your way. And if you come down, you can catch my wave. Yeah. I'm a so like that right there. Did you hear that big breath right here? And of course, he just rapped a lot. And so, of course, you're going to need to take a breath. Let's take a listen to this right here. Wow. So, and even, like I said, Lyric has bre good, great, good breath control and good studio etiquette. A lot of times uh, people don't know that there is a, there's a science when it comes to how to position your face in the microphone to make sure that all of these <gasps> breaths aren't recorded. Sometimes people know how to just move their head to the side for their breaths and come right back in on the vocal like I just did just now. All right, so we have this big breath right here selected. Again, I have a couple of options. If I want to come in and I want to grab my scissors, I can come and just click right there. And it opens that up for me to be able to fade in, fade out. And we'll do some fades here in one second. Um, but my favorite instance, like I said, I, what, for my workflow flow, I just come, I hit command, I hold command. I select the part that I know I'm going to be clipping the audio out of. I hit delete. Um, I press T twice to get back to my regular pointer tool. And then if you're on a MacBook, Pro like I am, you can pinch to zoom in and out, and it allows you just to be able to get in and get out very, very quickly. So we have some silence. Now we need to address. I'm here to say, know that your life passed, you pass away. When you wake every day, go about your way. And if you come down, you can catch my wave. Yeah, I'm gonna come with it. I'll now I will say, too much silence is not a good thing either. Too much silence uh, leaves the track or the vocal sounding very robotic. Um, and so you'll even as you listen to music and I guarantee you, as you start doing this kind of stuff more, you start noticing little things. Um, it's like, oh, I know how they did that. Um, I know that I know how they did that effect. I know what they did. I think Chris always talks about that, too. And when he's doing video, uh, he's able to identify like, oh, I know how to, I know what effect or filter that they used. So if I come over here to the top left uh, part of my screen and if I hit I or this top I. Uh, this I with a circle around it. There's two ways to get to this. It's called the inspector. You could hit I, or you can click that uh, that I at the top left. And under region, we'll go to a place called more. And right there, we can add a fade in or fade out. I like doing this because I can select multiple places that I want fades, multiple takes that I want fades on. I'll come in. I double tap here, I double click, I'm sorry, where it says fade in at the top left. 
I type in anywhere from 50 to 100, sometimes 250, just depending on what I'm going for usually. And you can see right there on each track selection, there's a small fade right there in the beginning. And I could still come if I wanted to hit T for my toolbar, scroll down to my fade tool. If I wanted to make that fade bigger, smaller, you see I'm affecting more than one now because I still have both tracks selected. And it allows us to just get in and out very quickly. Okay, so that's about 10 minutes on this video. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and following along. I'll go ahead and get into noise gates next, but for the purpose of keeping our video short and concise, uh, about 10 minutes long, I think we're probably up to about 12 minutes on this one. We'll go ahead and bring it to an end. All right, peace.